Good morning, everyone. This is Scott Sharkey, and thank you for attending this live Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation Grand Rounds webinar. Before we start, I would like to acknowledge the expertise of MHIF staff members John Rickert and Maya Hendel Patterson for bringing this Grand Rounds to you, and to Jan Dick for her work with our visiting scholars. This morning, we have a special speaker. Dr. Yu Du, whose presentation is titled Perspectives on the Management of COVID-19 Infection in China. Dr. Du is an interventional cardiologist at the Department of Cardiology at the Beijing Anjian Hospital and the Capital Medical University. His hospital has about 1,500 beds, so about twice the size of Abbott Northwestern. In June 2019, Dr. Du joined the Minneapolis Heart Institute Foundation as a visiting scholar in the Valve Science Center under the direction of Drs. Paul Saraja and Mario Gessel. And Dr. Du has distinguished himself by his intellect, his work ethic, and especially his warm personality. Dr. Du and his family are from the Hubei province in China, the capital of which, as you all know, is Wuhan. And for perspective, Hubei province has slightly less surface area than the state of Minnesota, yet with 10 times the population. Dr. Du is delivering his grand rounds from his apartment in Minneapolis. And you can all feel free to ask questions during the presentation uh, through the chat below. And I now turn the podium over to my friend, Dr. Yu Du. Good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, it's my great honor to have this uh, presentation here. And so when Dr. Sharkey reached me out and to ask me whether I would like to share the experiences with COVID-19 in China, I did, hesitate, I did hesitate a little bit because I'm not an expert on the uh, infection disease, um, but I know I would do something because uh, this is a global pandemic and uh, everybody is trying to do something to get through the, the pandemic. No matter you are a cardiologist or you are an expert on infection disease. So this is my disclosure. And uh, this presentation is for uh, educational use only. And uh, recommendations on COVID-19 management are based on the Chinese clinical guideline for COVID-19 pneumonia, diagnosis, and treatment, the seventh edition. So I would like to talk about the five parts of COVID-19. So as you know, a cluster of cases of pneumonia with unknown etiologists occurred in Wuhan, China, uh, December uh, 2019. So this is a novel coronavirus identified from the specimen from the patients leading to the, leading to the coronavirus disease, which is called COVID-19 by WHO. And uh, there are basically four genus of uh, coronavirus, and uh, the SARS-CoV-2 belongs to the beta genus. And there, are, uh, and there are seven types of uh, coronavirus which can affect uh, uh, people. And uh, this coronavirus, it shares 90% of homology with SARS-like coronavirus strain, which is believed from bat. So um, this is a medium-sized envelope, the positive strand RNA virus. And uh, as you can see, the transmission electron microscope. So this is a coron-like particles. And this is why the, the viral called coronavirus. And uh, uh, the spike on the surface here, the spike on the surface of the virus is different from SARS and MERS coronavirus. And this is believed the main reason why the, the virus is so uh, easily to affect people. And the, the origin of the virus is unknown and most of probably from nature selection. And uh, the virus is fragile to ultraviolet and heat. So the COVID-19 is actually a pandemic, uh, global pandemic which affecting 183 countries or regions and uh, more, than one, uh, more than 1 million people affected. Unfortunately, the number of people who confirmed, this, who confirmed and died are increasing every day. So in the beginning, uh, in the beginning uh, most of the patients uh, in China had the exposure history to a seafood market, which is believed to the main source of uh, infection. But then a lot of people, they don't have any uh, uh, exposure history to the safety market. 
unless they are person-to-person -person transmission was identified, especially patient-to-doctor uh, transmission. So the main source of infection is infect infected patients. And uh, the re respiratory droplets and close contact is believed to be the main route of transmission. Even the aerosol transmission or fake oral transmission are reported by some studies. And human beings are generally suspected. So here is the uh, manif manif manifestations. The incubation period within two weeks after exposure, uh, predominantly four to five days, and the common, uh, common symptoms including fever, which is, uh, which is mild fever when you are in admission. And only 44% of people, they have fever. But during the hospitalization, a lot of people, they get a fever. And the, fever, the degree of the fever increased. And uh, other uh, symptoms, including uh, dry cough and fatigue. So most of the patients affect, infected disease are only mild or moderate symptoms. And uh, the, severe, uh, symptom, the severe patients, they may have dysplea, hypoxemia. And the severe, critically severe patients, they may have respiratory failure, shock, or multi organ dysfunction. And the prognosis is generally good, unless for those, the elderly or those with chronic comorbidities. For differential diagnosis, uh, including the upper respiratory tract infection or uh, pneumonia by other, by other virus and uh, lung infection disease. So for some uh, suspected cases, even the common respiratory pathogen tested positive, we should, do, we should also do the nucleic acid test because there's a chance of co-infection. So for asymptomatic infection, this is very important in China now because um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a concern for those uh, patients that don't have symptoms, but they can transmit this disease to others. And uh, the proportion is unknown and uh, it's supposed to be 18 to 31%. And uh, there are basically two types. So some patients, after they get, infect, after they get infected, uh, they don't have any symptoms during the whole disease course. And some patients, they don't have symptoms only within the incubation period. But after that, the symptom will, 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 the symptom will present. So according to one report, there are 15% of people, uh, of patients who get infected. They don't have any symptoms, but they have some typical CT imaging findings. And, uh, uh, but another problem is that whether those people, they are symptomatic, they can, try, they can share the virus to others. I think the answer would probably yes, because according to one report, the viral load decayed in the asymptomatic patients is very similar to that in, in, in symptomatic patients. And here's the autopsy of the patient. He's a 85 year old man, died of COVID-19 and a pulmonary failure. As you can see here, the white patch lesions on the left lung tissue and the white viscous fluid overflow here with the fiber bands, the white foam mucus in the trachea and the, 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 and the the gelatinous mucus attachment in the right lung bronchus. And this is the myocardial section, which shows a gray red fish like. And here's the uh, pathology. We can see the bilateral diffused via damage with cellular fibromyxid axillaries here, and uh, the discrimination of the pneumos pneumocytes and the hyaline membrane formation, which indicate adult respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, here is the, the liver spice. The spice which shows the microvascular stenosis. And uh, the, here, here is the myocardium, which shows the inter, interstitial uh, molecular inflammation here. So for the lab examination, uh, in the earlier stage, the leukocytes are normal or decreased, but lymphocytes usually decrease. And for most of the patients, the CRP, ESR are increased, and, uh, and, uh, and PCT are normal. For severe patients, the dimer are significantly increased and the lymphocytes are significantly decreased. And there are still some homeocytes of the disease progression, including the lymphocytes, the inflammatory markers, the lactic acid, and power lesion on chest image. And there are some specific uh, examinations for the virus. You can use the upper or low airway specimen and uh, using the RT-PCR method to test the viral nucleic acid, or you can use the serum to test the specific IgM or IgG antibodies against the virus. And uh, um, here is the, uh, here's the, here, uh, the picture shows the timing of the RNA and antibodies, they increase at different time. So uh, for the RNA, it increased after you get infected, but for IgM antibodies, it increased seven days after you get infected. 
but only 10 days after you get infected, you can, you can detect the, the, the IgM in the serum. And uh, after two weeks of infection, you can detect the IgM in the serum and it, and it provides the long-term immunity during the disease progress. So those features indicate that you might use, you might use the three indices to do a comprehensive diagnosis. So um, if, you, if the PCR, which is used to detect a virus nucleic acid, if the PCR is positive, antibody is selective, which means in the, you are in the window of the infection. And if PCR positive, IgM positive, you mean, mean, that means you are in the earlier stage of infection. If the three indices are positive, which means you are in the active phase of infection. If PCR positive, IgG positive, which means patient in the late or recurrent stage of infection. But if PCR elective, but either IgM or IgG positive, which means the PCR result might be false elective, where you had a past infection. And here is the uh, typical state images. So after three days of symptom onset, there is a focal ground glass opacity here. And uh, uh, 10 days after symptom onset, there's a bilateral and peripheral uh, ground glass opacities on, the both, on both sides. And uh, 10, 20 days after onset, the, um, and there's a consolidation pattern over here. And uh, 13 days after symptom onset, and, and there is a mixed patterns on bilateral and the peripheral patterns. So here is the comparison of the chest CT imaging and the viral nucleic acid test. So based on the positive RT-PCR, which is used to detect the viral nucleic acid, uh, based, on this, uh, based on this gold standard, the chest CT sensitivity is very high. But the specificity is, is low to 25%, which is believed to be other, uh, which is believed to uh, pneumonia caused by other virus. And most importantly, 6% and 16% uh, to 93% patients, they had initial positive CT consistent consistent with COVID-19 prior or parallel to the initial positive RT-PCR or prior to the development of symptoms. So this means the CT imaging is a very useful tool to do a clinical diagnosis, especially in epidemic area because of its high sensitivity, easy access, and rapid lowering result compared with the viral nucleic acid test. And in China's guideline, if a patient had a classic CT imaging or and symptoms, even the RT-PCR is negative, the patient should be isolated and continue monitoring RT-PCR in an isolation unit. Then I would like to talk about how to prevent and identify COVID-19 infection. Uh, this is the basic preventive measures. Most of, uh, most of you know about this. And I think the American CDC, they just update the stay home order and the, the, the mask. So just pay attention on this. And this is uh, the uh, recommendations uh, by WHO that how to, pro how to protect yourself when you are going to care other, others who are suspected or confirmed. And then I would like to talk about how we do, uh, what we do in China. So the temperature check spot are everywhere in, in, the whole, in the whole country. And this is the disinfection in public place. This is the uh, high, speed air, uh, high speed way uh, station. And this is Fangzhong Hospital, which I will talk about later. It's a temporary hospital. Obviously, it's transformed from a sports center and uh, used for confirmed cases uh, with only mild or moderate symptoms. And this is the prevention propagations in every community. And this is the this is subway. So everybody wear masks in public places. And the first day is like Wuhan, which is knocked down. So mutual care based on community is very important. And here are some uh, recommendations for healthcare providers and uh, based on different clinical scenario and situations, we've, we have three level protection recommendations. And here is the detail of recommendations, how to put on and put off a PPE for, for health, for health uh, workers who take care of the COVID-19 patients. So if you have some symptoms, um, you may get uh, COVID-19, but before you get but before you seek medical help, you can do a brief self evaluation So once you have the following criteria, you should go to see a doctor. And the temperature more than 38 uh, Celsius degree, no symptom improvement or deterioration after one or two days of home care, uh, travel to the epidemic area or contact people from the epidemic area recently, close contact with symptomatic patients, 
So for the elderly, the pregnant women, children, and patients with chronic disease, you'd better see a doctor. So this is what we do in China. You can do a brief online consultation, and uh, it's, it's, free, it's free for everyone. So this is Hubei province, this is Wuhan, and this is my hometown. You just select the city and select the hospital, select the doctors you want to have the consultation. You want to have a, cons have a consultation. And you can briefly do a, a, a self evaluation based on your demographics, epidemiology, and symptoms. And, and, the and the system will give you a brief summaries and some suggestions whether you should stay at home or you, you should see a doctor. And this is the criteria we use in clinic, how to screen patients with suspected or confirmed cases. So as you know, we use RT-PCR and, and, and uh, IgM, IgG, not frequently used, most probably uh, RT-PCR to confirm cases. And for suspected cases, means you have one epidemic, uh, epidemic criteria here, and, or, and plus two clinical criteria, or you have three clinical criteria. So I'm going to highlight the clustering onset because some patients, they don't have any exposure history to epidemic area or person from epidemic area, which means um, you have two symptomatic cases within two weeks in a small area. And uh, as I mentioned before, so the CT imaging for the COVID-19 pneumonia is very important to do clinical diagnosis. And, the, and here's the fever clinic. Uh, so uh, this is independent clinic, usually besides the hospital. And for patient uh, who had a fever or diarrhea, uh, who might have an infection disease. And this was, uh, and uh, uh, you can see the layout here. So basically in the, they designed based on three zones, the contaminated area, the, the pink one, the yellow one is the, part, the partially contaminated area, and the clean one, the, 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 glue, the, the blue one. And the two passages, one is for a patients and one is for medical staff only. This is a uh, prevent the cross infection. And here is the algorithm, how we screen patients. So if a patient is suspected, we should collect the specimen and to do the liquid acid test. And if the, if the patient tested positive, we should transfer the patients to the de deserted hospital. If tested negative, the patient cannot go home and they have to, they have to, do, they have to finish the medical observation. And uh, um, all suspected or confirmed cases should be isolated and report to CDC directly. And this is the Fang Chang Shell Hospital, which is used for uh, isolation, uh, basic medical care, triage, and monitoring, and uh, uh, some essential living and uh, social engagement. And uh, I think the most three characteristics, including the rapid construction, usually in one or two days, and uh, uh, massive scale, thousands of beds, quarantine beds, and the low cost. So by March, by March 10th, the Fangsang Hospital in Wuhan cared 12,000 patients, 12,000 confirmed COVID-19 patients. And uh, this is the admission criteria for of the Fangsang uh, Hospital. So you should test the positive, and but only but only with mild and moderate symptoms, and you can take care of yourself. You can live independently and the uh, absence of severe chronic disease and low history mental disorders and uh, less than 65 year old. So for patients more than 65 year old or you have severe comorbidities, you should transfer to the high level hospitals because there is a high possibility that you, you progress to severe COVID-19. So here is the uh, Fangsang Hospital map in Wuhan. So there are, 60, uh, there are 16 Fangsang hospitals with more uh, with uh, 13,000 be quarantine beds. And the, the uh, design of the Fonsa Hospital is very close to the field clinic, the three zones, and two passengers for uh, patients and the medical staff. And then I would like to talk about how to control a uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Let's talk about uh, Wuhan first. So um, uh, this is the location of Wuhan. Uh, Wuhan is the largest city in Hubei province. This is Hubei province and also the most popular uh, city in, in, in central China with a population more than 11, uh, with the population more than 11, uh, 11 million. And uh, this is my hometown, uh, ancient city, and uh, this is Hubei province, this is Wuhan city, this is ancient city. So the distance, this, the, the, this, the direct distance is 500 kilometers, which means one hour by plane and four hours by train. And here are some pictures in Wuhan, the city flower, the, the Yangtze River, the Wuhan University temples, 
the, the famous tennis player. And this is ancient, uh, ancient instrument. So then I'm going to talk about uh, what happened in Wuhan and what we do in China to control the pandemic. So on December 2020, on December 26, four unusual cases of pneumonia without etiology report to local CDC by Dr. Ji Xianzhang. And five days later, uh, they re the China government report the, the cluster of pneumonia to WHO. And on January 3rd, the government initiated an emergency monitoring case investigation, close contact management and market investigation. And on, on January 7th, the new viral was identified from the specimen of the patients as a new corolla, as a, as a law for coronavirus. And, uh, um, and five days later, the sequence of the virus was firstly shared to WHO. And four days later, the, the RT-PCR assay was distributed to Hubei province to do, the, RT to do the, the nucleic acid test. And on January 20, 23rd, Wuhan city was locked down and the first batch then the first batch of medical team arrived in Wuhan, and, and one day, one day later, and four, four and the first thousand bed uh, hospital started to build. And on January 13th, the WHO alert a uh, public health emergency of international concern. And on, on February 3rd, the first three temporary hospitals started to build. And on February 7th, the medical team from other um, 19 provinces uh, and regions arrived in Hubei province to support them. And on April 8, Wuhan's, Wuhan's lockdown is easy. And now the situation in China is getting better with very limited cases uh, daily. And then I will talk about the, the, the quarantine or the lockdown or shutdown. So uh, this is actually an ancient measure to control the pandemic, uh, which is dating back to 14th century, uh, when Europeans are used the quarantine to, 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 fight with, to fight against with the Black Death, as you see here. Um, but why we shut down Wuhan? Is it necessary we shut down Wuhan? So as I talked as I talked before, Wuhan is a transportation hub in central China. So before Wuhan shut down, lockdown, there are already 4.3 million people that travel out from Wuhan during the Spring Festival to to come back to their home around China. As you see here, behind before Wuhan was shut down, there are already some cluster of cases in other province cities around China. So. And more importantly, the more people they travel from Wuhan to other cities, the more cases, confirmed cases they have in other provinces. So I think it is better to shut to lock down Wuhan. And after Wuhan lockdown, as you can see here, the uh, this prevent 6.7 million people they travel out from Wuhan. And uh, this measure indeed uh, again indeed went 2.9 days for other cities and the province to prepare the pandemic. But what they do, so they call it the level one response to response to major public health emergency. I personally call it shutdown. As you can see here, this involves 300 cities. As you can see here, the closed schools, closed entertainment, videos and ban public gathering, a lot of things they did. So I call it a shutdown. It's very, tra it's very strict uh, traffic ban. And uh, so compared with you doing nothing it's here, if you shut down the Wuhan and if you lock down Wuhan and shut down other cities with never one response, so it, it, this measure decreased the 96% of potential infection cases. So uh, I would say the travel ban and the national emergency respond delayed the growth and limit the size of COVID-19 epidemic. So after you control all the patients, and cut down the route, trans the transmission route. You should do intensive. You should do intensive tests. So this is the Hoya laboratory in China, and, uh, uh, and they did 200,000 200, tests nationwide. And this is the their kit uh, for the RT-PCR kit they use, which it, which was just approved by FDA on March 27th. And this is also a RNA a RNA a kit which can detect the six respiratory virus at the same time, only 1.5 hours. And uh, uh, here is the anti IgG, IgM antibody uh, combined testing kit uh, with a very high sensitivity and the specificity. And here is the CT imaging tool, which based on artificial intelligence uh, for COVID-19 imaging diagnosis with only 20 seconds per scan and uh, is with very high accuracy. So 
So, uh, in a, so in the beginning, we have the same problem with, um, with American law. Like we don't have enough PPE. We don't have hospitals, beds, and the medical providers. Um, so the government, they sent 300, they sent 300, uh, 13 medical teams with, with more than uh, 400,000 400, medical care providers to, to the Hubei province to help them to do the, to fight against the COVID-19. And we built two, two, we built two uh, infection disease uh, hospitals and over 14 uh, desolate hospitals and temporary hospitals with more than uh, 14,000 hospital beds and 17 quarantine beds. Um, because we don't have enough um, PPEs in the beginning, so the Chinese manufacturers uh, from other uh, industries were mobilized and to produce the, the, the PPEs. And the daily mask production is increased from eight to 15.5 million within one month. And this is a medical team from my hospital, Beijing Anzhen Hospital, with 11 health workers from CCU, ICU, um, infection disease department, and uh, uh, sent to Wuhan to help them. And this is Dr. Liang Tang, who is our MHS scholar during 2017 to 2019, and from Xiangya Hospital, and Dr. Tang with his colleagues with, uh, on PPE. Fortunately, the medical team from my hospital and Dr. Tang's hospital just returned to their province on the last day of, on the last day of March, and they are in quarantine now. I hope they can return to their work soon. And we also get a lot of international support from 71 countries and nine international organizations. And this is the WHO China joint effort. And Dr. Li Qin, who is from Columbia University, and Dr. Lan Shanzhong, who is the leader of China expert um, Palos, um, sharing the experience of COVID-19. And overseas Chinese student and people are delayed PPE to the front line in Wuhan. And because, because the traffic ban and the lockdown or shutdown measures are e is easy every day in China. So there is a concern whether there is a second wave in China. Actually, we are afraid of this too. So the contamination, the, the contaminate, the, the contaminate, the contaminate measures are easing gradually with our true cautions in China. As you can see, we, 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 we still do the close monitoring, extensive testing and contract tracing for new cases and maintaining social distance practice and close borders. So for residents, if you return, you should quarantine for 14 days. And the vaccines is still undergoing research. And uh, you see here, this is uh, just the opened uh, car factories uh, in Wuhan. Uh, they're performing the social distancing measures during lunch break. And uh, here is the health code. I'll, I'll briefly introduce this. So this is a barcode containing your health, your personal health details and travel histories. So the red code, so everyone have a, a health code. So if, you, if your code are red, means you are a confirmed case. If your uh, code are yellow, which means you are a suspected case, or you can also turn from red to yellow after you get in track, after you getting uh, treatment and discharge within 14 days quarantine and uh, the RT-PCR tested negative. And if you are green, a green code, which means you are in a safe place for a long time, and you can also turn from red or turn from yellow. And uh, if you only, only if you have the green code, you can return to work, you can use public transportations, and you can cross province borders. So then I want to talk about how to manage patients with COVID-19. And the general treatment, including rest in bed with supportive treatment. If you go to the hospital, the vital sign should be monitoring and the oxygen therapy is indicated. For antiviral uh, therapy, I think uh, there is no robust uh, evidence show either of those uh, medicines are effective. So those recommendations based on uh, uh, based on empirical treatment. So we did we did recommend the R for interferon inhalation or lopiverine or ritolavir for treatment for rebarbering and uh, chloroquine and abilor. This may be useful for some for some cases. And please pay attention for the antiviral drugs, the adverse reactions, contra contraindications, and the interactions with these drugs. And we don't recommend uh, use three, use more than three antiviral drugs at the same time. And the and the, and here is the uh, illustration of the development vaccines. Basically, there are two promising vaccines are in the phase one uh, clinical trial, which is based on non-replicating vectors. One is based on RNA, and here is. 
And here is uh, the first click tool in China uh, to test the safety of the recombinant novel coronavirus vaccine in here start. And here is three uh, dose escalation uh, groups uh, with, the, with the primary indicator, the adverse reaction seven days post-injection. Post so by April, sec by April 2nd, all eligible volunteers got, in got injection, and 18 volunteers finished isolation with very good conditions. And we, we also use um, Chinese traditional medicine uh, for, for patients with mild and uh, uh, moderate symptoms. And we believe that this can relieve symptoms and reduce uh, progression to severe type. We can also use this to, inhib to inhibit the cytokine store in severe patients. And here is the three drugs and the three prescriptions. So for severe and the critical severe patients, I think the principle including treatment of symptom, underlying disease and prevention com complications and the secondary infections and the multiple organ, uh, multiple organ function support because the COVID-19 involve a lot of systems and organs. So a multidisciplinary collaboration and the management is very important. For respiratory support, so uh, you can use the standard oxygen therapy or you can use advanced style oxygen therapy. But if those symptom improvement within one or two days, one or two hours, we should use in invasive mechanical ventilation. And just pay attention for the positive pressure ventilation because this might induce a viral aerosol formation, which means you should protect yourself when you care the patients. And some patients, they may have severe adult respiratory distress syndrome, uh, which uh, whose whose prognosis is very bad, and we can use ECMO to support them uh, using the VV or VA model for secondary support. So uh, we can consider the fluid resuscitation, microcirculation improvement, and vessel active agents. And uh, the vital signs should be close monitoring, and we should pay attention for the septic shock, the GI bleeding, the severe heart failure. For renal failure treatment, uh, we should focus on the etiology treatment and the renal replacement therapy is indicated for patients who had hyperkalemia, acidosis, a pulmonary anemia, or excessive water load. And uh, you can do a fluid management with multiple organ dysfunction occurred. So for recovered plas patients' plasma therapy, this is uh, indicated for patients are severe or critical severe uh, uh, type and with rapid disease progression, and the donor should be uh, relatively young and uh, more than three weeks from symptom onset and meeting the discharge criteria and no history of blood transmitting disease and lab tested for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, nucleic acid lactive. And uh, uh, the, blood the blood purification treatment including plasma ex exchange, absorption, perfusion, and this is used for remove uh, inflammatory factors and reduce the cytokine store. So for immunotherapy, this is indicated for patients with extensive lung lesion, elevated inter, in, interleukin six levels, and the and the tocilizumab was indicated. So for other treatment, so for the glucocoides, this is indicated for patients with progressive disease, um, but only for short term and low dose use. But WHO do not recommend this for. Uh, the treatment of uh, COVID-19 patients, unless the patients combined with COPD or asthma expansion, and for the uh, and for the pregnant women who have the who had severe or critically severe COVID-19, so I think uh, the the guideline recommend uh, the pregnancy termination, or you can do the cesarean delivery if if indicated. So here are some uh, discharge criteria. And uh, once you meet all of the below conditions, you can discharge the body temperature normal for three days and significant improvement in symptoms and in chest imaging. And, uh, uh, and the nucleic acid has collected for twice within 24 hours interval. And, uh, but, but after discharge from the hospital, you should stay in an isolation, isolation unit for another 14 days to do the health monitoring. And then I will talk about the COVID-19 and the cardiovascular disease. Uh, so as you know, the cardiovascular disease is very common um, in uh, COVID-19 patients. And the hypertension and, and the cardiovascular disease uh, is even common in respiratory disease in COVID-19 patients. And uh, uh, some patients with severe uh, symptoms, they may have acute cardio injury. 
this was this was defined by uh, um, meaning by troubling, and even even some patients they don't have they don't have they don't have pre pre uh, pre existing cardiovascular disease they can have acute cardiac uh, injuries, so some patients uh, they present a lot of cardiac symptoms uh, and see a cardiologist first, and then they had uh, and then they had respiratory uh, symptoms and diagnosis of the COVID nineteen. So this means. Uh, if you if you are a physician in a uh, cardiovascular clinic, you should also protect yourself. And uh, uh, patients with uh, pre pre existing cardiovascular disease, these patients are more likely to get infected, and they develop a lot of symptom symptoms, and they have very uh, poor clinical outcomes. And for patients taking antiviral drugs, uh, please pay attention for the drug related heart damage. And here is the potential mechanism of myocardial injury and uh, COVID-19. So as you know that, um, so uh, there is a uh, there is an attachment protein spike on the surface of the virus, and this spike can be activated by the TMPRSS2 on the host cell on the surface of the host cell. So after this spike was activated, uh, the, the spike can act, can attach the angiotensin converting ASME2 on the surface of the lung cell, also the myocardium. So this means the virus can enter into the cell from through the, the, through the receptor and induce myocardial injuries and myocarditis. So there indeed a concern that whether we should withdraw ACEI or ARB um, inhibitors, uh, the, the ROS system inhibitor, uh, because there is a possibility that if you use ARB or ACEI, the concentration of the the concentration and the activity of the ACE2 will be increased, uh, which means you will get high possibility to, to get the COVID-19. I think uh, there is no robust data to support you to do that. So uh, in the Chinese guideline or other uh, guidelines, they don't recommend to to routinely withdraw ACEI or ARB in COVID-19 patients. Uh, another uh, mechanism, including the cytokine store, because uh, the patients with COVID-19 the pro the pro inflammatory factors are significantly increased, and other mechanisms including the pulmonary infections, which may induce the the hypoxemia and the hypertension, which induce the imbalance of the myocardial oxygen supply. And uh, here is the Chinese Society of Cardiology Expert Council's uh, management of cardio cardiovascular disease during COVID nineteen epidemic. So we have two algorithms based on the uh, based on the regions. With a high, with a high or low incidence of COVID-19 patients, and they show you how to manage the patients, how to transfer the patients, and how to do isolation. And uh, here is some details recommendations uh, of the, the the treatment principles to treatment the critical cardiovascular disease. So, if a patient with a STEMI, uh, if the thrombolysis therapy is indicated, or or STEMI patients presenting after uh, exceeding the optimal window of revascularization, or high-risk lung stem patients, or patients with lung-complicated uh, stem for B uh, aortic dissection, uh, or acute pulmonary embolism, or acute uh, heart failure, or hypertensive emergency. All those patients, if indicated, the conservative treatment is, is recommended. Unless there are signs of uh, hemodynamic instability, we should consider urgent or emergent uh, interventions or surgery. Because the evidence and knowledge of COVID-19 is happening every day, so there are a lot of unanswered uh, unanswered questions. And here is the and here is a list of the unanswered questions which may, which might be very important. So uh, like what is the optimal uh, strategy for identifying the contact or infected patients and to to which extent the viral muta mutated during the global transmission and what is the proportion of super spreaders among among the the the, co the cohort of patients, and uh, these there the evidence of pre symptomatic viral shedding was the time point of viral shedding, and what is the association of disease progression? Uh, what is the later course of severe or non severe cases? What is the characteristics of and the mechanism of mucus hyperfiltration in the small airway, and how does SARS CoV two result in pneumonia and uh, uh, inflammatory cytokine store? And what is the most valuable biomarker for predicting the clinical symptoms, outcomes of COVID-19? And could artificial intelligence do a lot to help with the diagnosis and, and the um, treatment in COVID-19 patients? 
so a lot of unanswered questions. And here are some free online resources, and you can you can find more detailed recommendations. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for your attention. You, uh, that was a remarkable presentation, and I see that we had uh, more than 100 participants. So one of our, perhaps our all-time high for grand rounds. We'll see. Um, John, I think we can open this to questions. If you, I'm going to turn it over to you and Dr. Du. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Du, for your excellent presentation. Uh, we do have quite a few questions coming in. Uh, just a reminder that the Q&A pod is located at the bottom of your screen, uh, so feel free to keep those questions coming. And uh, Dr. Du, uh, the first question we have is, how has COVID-19 affected your family back home in China? Yeah, so um, so I would like to show on the... So my hometown is uh, my hometown is more south and west of Wuhan city, and before actually before Wuhan city was locked down, my city uh, was was nearly shut down. The traffic ban is already uh, carried out because there are already some cluster cases of, of unknown pneumonia in uh, near my near my near my hometown. Uh, this is a uh, near my city. So um, what they what they did is that uh, because the the traffic ban are different between different cities like in Wuhan like in my city so uh, so in the beginning they can they can get they, they can get out to get the groceries the essential food and the orders every one day so they can get one day one family one day they can get out and uh, after that after Wuhan lockdown so every three day the family can get one can have one person out their family out of the home to get the gro essential groceries and food so I think uh, with the disease progressing, I think the, the, the treatment measures are, are a little bit different. And uh, what we call uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, home stay home order is that you cannot go home. You cannot do you cannot do running or you cannot do an um, essential um, uh, gathering. That that is impossible. You just get essential food and groceries. Yeah. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and my family just uh, returned to work, uh, as I show here. But, but, but it's very, but it's very cautious, and everybody is wearing mask while they walk, while they walk, and practicing the social distance. So, yeah, they just afraid of the second wave. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank, thank you. So another question that's on a similar, in a similar category is how is Wuhan faring economically? And what steps are being taken to support businesses and individuals while while there's no income? Yeah, this is a this is a big problem. So um, if you shut if you lock down the city, the economy the economy stopped. I would say it's stopped because nothing happened there. Everybody stayed at home. So I think the government they they they, they delayed the money to the to the to the to the, to the citizens in Wuhan and the treatment. And the treatment is all free, free for for them. And uh, as I as I told as I told here, because if the city was locked down, so the the so the mutual help is very the mutual help is very important for everyone, because you cannot go out if you need something if you need essential food or or if you need essential food or groceries or some patients they are they have some chronic disease they need drugs. You just call to the, the medic. You just call the person in the community, and they can deliver this essential food or drugs to your apartment. Thank you. Looks like we have a few more questions coming in, and again, feel free to enter those into the Q and A pod at the bottom of your screen. Okay. Um, and this attendee uh, has a comment on a question. So the comment is: Thank you for an extremely thorough presentation. Can you comment on COVID nineteen infection rates and severity in Chinese health providers? Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, for the for the COVID nineteen infection rates and the uh, severities uh, in in Chinese health providers, yeah, I would say um, so. Uh, in the beginning, because we don't know much about the so actually uh, we have a, 
uh, we have a very strict uh, monitoring system in China for the for the epi, for the uh, infection disease, especially in pandemic or epidemic disease, because we have a bad experience with SARS. So this, there, so there is a, a very strict uh, uh, system. Like the the fever clinic was built for the for this. But in the beginning, nobody nobody knows about the the the, the COVID nineteen. So there are there are actually a lot of inf a lot of uh, people and a lot of physicians they get infected. But after that, after we we get more uh, knowledge and more information about disease, I think the uh, I think the, the the severity of the disease is decreased because uh, I talk I talked about so the medical team sent to Wuhan. There are more than there are more than there are there are more than thousands of uh, medical staff workers. Nobody get infected. So they have enough experience on the disease, and they have enough PPE to protect themselves. So I think um, the knowledge we know about the disease is, is, is growing every day. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, so there's a couple more, um, the first of which being, so COVID-19 is the second SARS virus originating in China. What is being done to identify the source slash sources of these viruses? Uh, yeah. So, um, the source I would say uh, the source the source is most of problem from bat, from bat because the bat has thousands of um, uh, virus in, in it, but uh, but but the source in the beginning is is believed that you from. Uh, so the source is believe, in the beginning is believed that you come from a seafood market in China because. Uh, in the beginning, most of the patients uh, with the co with COVID nineteen had the exposure history to a safety market, but actually, I think the first case in China, which is now I believe the first case, they don't have the ex they don't have the expo uh, exposure history to a safety market, or they don't have the exposure history to people come from the uh, market. So I think um, after that, the if the person to person transmission would be the main source of infection. Yeah. All right, thank you for that. Um, there's a few more. Um, so the next one would be, can you speak about the prevalence of cardiac arrhythmias and sudden death in COVID-19 patients? Uh, do you have any thoughts about the prevalence or worsened severity of the disease in males? Yeah, so for, for, the, pre for the prevalence of uh, cardiac arrhythmia, I, I would say um, some patients, especially for severe or critically severe patients, they did have some. Uh, they did have some uh, threatening arrhythmia or sudden deaths, and the problem say uh, maybe I'm not. I'm not. I'm not quite sure about the numbers of the, uh, but it is very. But it is. It is, it is relatively common for patients who had uh, severe or critically severe uh, disease. Thank you. Um, so, is there any evidence? Sorry, excuse me. Is there any evidence that viral load at exposure relates to severity of disease? In patients on ACE or ARB, do they have more severe disease? Yeah, I think the viral load. Um, so the viral load peak usually uh, during the four to five days after you present symptom. So that means it is very easy to spread the, the virus to others after you uh, got this, after you get a disease four to three, after you have symptoms four to, four to five days. And uh, I don't know whether there is a relationship between the viral, uh, the viral uh, exposure to, uh, to, uh, to the disease of the severity, but one, one I can confirm that uh, the symptomatic and the asymptomatic, those kind of patients, they have the, um, they have the, same, uh, they have the same possibility to, to transform disease to others. Thank you. Um, so there's a few more. Uh, so is there any evidence from China for different strains of this virus with different virulence. Um, would you would you repeat your questions? So, is there any evidence from China with different strains and different severity? Um, different strain? Are uh, you? I mean, yeah. Uh, so, I think the most. Uh, yeah, I think most of the cases in China are the same type. Are the same? I mean, they have the same uh, RNA. They have the same RNA type. Yeah. But according to the uh, but according to report, there might be four to five uh, subtypes of the coronavirus in the world. Yeah, because I think the type in American or in China are different. Yeah, I'm not quite familiar about this, 
but in China, most of the patients have the same uh, type. Unless the cases are, uh, are transformed from other continents, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, looks like there's just two more questions. So um, the first one is how common is slash was hydroxychloroquine, hydroxychloroquine use? So how common is slash was that? And how did you monitor QT? And I apologize for the pronunciation. Yeah, this is a very good question. So uh, as I told before, uh, there is no robust data to support uh, the, the, the chloroquine to use in clinic. But we did actually use this drug in clinic. Um, I would say very common, but I don't know how um, the, the, the proportion of the problems, but it's very common. And according to one paper published in New England Journal of Medicine, uh, also the drug is though effective to reduce the, the, viral, the viral dose, but it, effective, but, it, but, it is a, uh, but it is feasible to, uh, to, decrease, to decrease the proportion of patients increase to severe type or elevate their symptoms. So I would say it might be helpful, but we need more robust evidence. And uh, to root the QT intervals is very important if you use, uh, if you use the, the, the chloroquine, especially for uh, patients who had uh, established cardiovascular disease. And we actually use the, the ECG to, to do this uh, monitoring, yeah. Great, thank you. So the last question we have is, first there's a comment, fantastic and comprehensive presentation, Dr. Du, thank you. And the question is, what do you think we must do as individuals to help the situation? And a follow-up question is, would you mind sharing what steps you personally took to help the situation in Wuhan, or excuse me, Wuhan and in the U.S.? And what would you do to, or what would you suggest you and your friends do to stay safe? Yeah, this is a this is a big question. Uh, it's a very good question. So, um, so personally, uh, because I'm I, I am Chinese, but per, but I am in the U.S. So I would so I would appreciate the culture in the US. So just uh, for example, for the mask. So if you don't wear a mask in China, you will be you will get a lot of criticisms from others. But in America, if you wear a mask, if you go to the public area, you might be you might be same as a stranger because nobody wear a mask. So I would say this is a cultural difference. Um, personally. Uh, in the beginning uh, of the uh, COVID-19 breakout in Minneapolis, I don't wear a mask because uh, I, I mean, I appreciate the culture here, but now I have to wear a mask uh, if I go, go out, even I, if, uh, especially I go to public areas, I think wearing mask is, is very important. And then do the hand hygiene. Uh, if you contact the, 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 surface, the, the surface of objective, and then I usually uh, close my window to, to, make the, to make the ventilation every day. I think, I think uh, in China, this is very common, but uh, according to the recommendation by CDC or by RWHO, maybe, maybe this, this was not recommended, but I would prefer to do this, to open your window, maybe uh, one, maybe half an hour, one hour, and two times a day, and to do uh, ventilation. And then I think uh, vitamin C are important to, to, to improve your uh, immunity. Uh, personally uh, speaking, I'm not sure whether they, it is useful, but I do this and uh, had enough uh, proteins, odors, and exercise. I think those are very important. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I agree. So it looks like while you're answering that, we had one more question, and this will be the last one in, in the interest of time, but are there any prophylactic medications that healthcare workers in China take preemptively while working with COVID-19 patients? Yeah, actually we did this. So I would show the traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so uh, it's, it's very hard to explain the, the, the mechanism of the tra traditional Chinese medicine, but it, it is very widely used in China. Uh, I would see, where is the medicine? So, um, Wait a moment, I will see the, the picture here. Yeah, it's here. So uh, it's very hard to explain the mechanism, how, it, how, how it, uh, it is effective to treat disease, but these three are very common to use. You see here, so more than 90% of confirmed cases 
they use the, the, the kind of uh, traditional Chinese medicine with or without Western medicine. And uh, uh, this is uh, this is even uh, this is even popular for mild or uh, mild or moderate symptoms, uh, especially this. I think this one, uh, this this three drugs also deliver to um, to Italian to help them. I don't know whether they, it is helpful to them, but uh, the Chinese government donates those drugs to Italian. And uh, so, uh, because the Chinese government also care about overseas students, so they delivered these these three drugs to the overseas to the overseas uh, Chinese students in in the U.S. in Europe. And uh, uh, so, this drug is actually a common drug in China. Uh, which is used for to relieve the symptom of uh, influenza, and I also use this. And before I come back to before I come to US um, in 2019 at June, I actually take two boxes of this drug just for influenza. Yeah, I, it's it's uh, effective to relieve your symptoms. I I think it is uh, it's, it is useful. Yeah. Okay. Um. It was so nice to see the picture of Liang uh, volunteering to help in Wuhan. So yeah, he just to come back his hometown. Yeah, right. Thank you so much to everyone out there. Stay well, all, and you. Uh, congratulations on a great talk. Thanks. Thanks, Lord Sharky. Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your attention.